All right, guys, welcome to 2023 US Open men's draw pick'em, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'm gonna work my way through each section of the draw and show you my picks one by one, round by round. If you're ready for my men's US Open pick, stay tuned, coming up next. All right, the first 16 players in the draw, right? We've got Carlos Alcaraz, number one seed here versus Dominic Kepfer from Germany. Interesting matchup first round. Kepfer was a, I believe, third round opponent for Roger Federer, 2022 French Open. I believe they mixed it up there. Played a nice tight match. Kepfer should go down in this match to Alcaraz pretty comfortably. Some other interesting things, though, within this section, right? We've got some strong players. Jordan Thompson versus Bodic van de Zanskulp, right? Daniel Evans against Daniel Aigalan. Greek Sport versus Artur Fies, who is an up-and-coming player, right? who's at an all-time high as a young player. Tanasi Kokonakis is hiding in this section of the draw. And then we've got Cam Norrie, and Cam Norrie's really been struggling on tour for quite a while, hasn't picked up some wins in a while, usually very strong on hard courts, but again, is really struggling this season. So let's kind of go through the picks here. First of all, kind of a sneak dark horse pick for me is going to be fees possibly over Greek Spore. Now, Greek Spore is playing really well this summer, so this is kind of a, a long shot pick in my mind, but fees very young. If you can rein it in and stay disciplined, I will take him to beat Greek Sport in that match and also move his way through the draw. But just for a second, let's move our way through one by one first. So we got Alcaraz here on the right. We're taking Carlos, right? Lloyd Harris versus Guido Pea. Interesting matchup. Both players sort of in a weird position here with their rankings down. Harris recovering from injury, right? And then Pella again, ranking-wise, quite a bit down. Also possibly recovering from injury, so ranking is very low. I'm going to take in this one for the moment, Harris, okay? Jordan Thompson versus Bodic van de Zanskulp. Now, this is a super interesting matchup because Thompson has been playing really well. So I'm actually going to take Jordan Thompson in this match. His forehand, he seemed to retool his forehand technique a little bit. And since he's retooled that and, and lengthened the swing in the back and gotten more of that full stretch shortened cycle, you know, quote unquote ATP forehand, he's gotten a lot more zip on his forehand. And I think because of that and Van de Zanskulp being a little bit weaker on his forehands and primarily strong on the backhand that Thompson is going to win this matchup. Next matchup, Daniel Galan, Alahi Galan versus Daniel Evans. And Dan Evans, right, sort of the workman-like you know, player chips a lot of backhands, can come over his backhand, major forehand tilt on the technique on his forehand side. I'm going to actually take Evans to win this matchup. And then we've sort of got the upset special possibly and also the dark horse located here. Now there's two potential dark horses, right? You've got Fees, who's been playing really, really well, young up and comer. And then we also have Kokonakis in this section down here. I'm not 100% sure who I want to take as the dark horse. I'm going to take Fees to upset Greek Spore, even though that's a really tall task. And if he gets through there, he can do some damage, right? Then we've got Jason Kubler and I believe Matteo Arnoldi right here. Interesting matchup. Kubler really with no major weapons. Arnoldi, a pretty solid player. I'm going to take Arnoldi in this matchup. Then we've got Kokonakis in the next section, another potential dark horse right against Sue here in this matchup. And I'm going to take Kokonakis. He can be very dangerous and plays very good ball, but at the same time, he can also get knocked out pretty easily. So it's sort of this toss up when I'm looking at Kokonakis. And then the next player I'm going to take right here is going to be either Shevchenko and Nori in this section. So this is a really big matchup, right? Because Nori, we know has been on a slide for quite a while. Shevchenko, up and coming player, 22 years old, has been playing very well and moving his way up through the rankings here in the last six to 12 months. Do I take Nori as an upset special versus Shevchenko or not? I think I'm going to take Nori and just say he's going to rebound. But I think what's happened with Nori too is a lot of guys have kind of figured out his game and they're comfortable against him. So he's not as tough of an out as he used to be in the past. But I'm going to take Nori in this matchup right here. So you can see my picks so far, just kind of scrolling through, right? Alcaraz, Harris, Thompson, Dan Evans, Fees, upset special over Greek Sport, even though, again, Greek Sport playing very well, hitting through the court very well. Arnaldi there from Italy. We've got Kokonakis, right? And then we've got Nori over Shevchenko. So really interesting stuff. Let's zip into the next section now, right? We'll kind of go through that part right here. 
Now we're approaching coming in hot, right? Zvera versus Vukic. Vukic did a really good job in Atlanta this summer, right? I believe he made the final there, and I think he actually won the title in Atlanta. Forehand, pretty big sauce on the forehand. Backhand, very consistent. Zverev, though, on his way back up, right? Remember Zverev, before his major injury, was basically, what, a top three player at that point. Had Rafa sort of in a tough position at the French Open back in 22, then hurt the leg slash ankle and was out for quite a while. So Vukic, right? Good and interesting player. Kind of a tough draw for him because he's been playing pretty well overall. I'm going to take Zverev here, but this could be pretty tight. Vukic is going to have a really difficult time hitting through Zverev's defense here. Going to be a tough task in a tall order. Next one up, Altmaier, right? The one-hander versus Constant Lestienne from France, who sort of has a little bit of an unorthodox game. Really appreciate the French players because a lot of them have a little bit of an unorthodox game. Lestienne a little bit that way, right? Kind of unconventional strokes. In this matchup, though, Altmaier, right, did a good job. I believe at the French, you know, a few months back, had a nice run. I'm going to take Les Dien here in the upset special. All right, next matchup here, Moutet, right, Corentin Moutet from France. Again, very creative, colorful, flaring player versus good old Andy Murray, right, with that metal hip. Andy's hanging around, one of my favorite players from the past, who's come back and done a really good job and had some pretty good runs. I'm going to take Murray in this matchup. I think that's a pretty safe bet right here. Andy Murray to come through. Mute, very flashy, but can be very inconsistent as he plays, right? Playing more for the flash instead of the results sometime in Murray, sort of that workhorse. I think Murray wins this pretty comfortably, probably in three sets. Next matchup, Serbian Alex Molchan versus Grigor Dimitrov, a fan favorite, right? And I think Rublev's man crush. I'm going to take Dimitrov in this match, probably four sets. I think Molchan, I believe he's a lefty capable of taking a set against Grigor if Grigor's a little bit off in a set, or if Molchan's just firing really well. The next matchup, right? Echeverry versus Vertain. I've never seen Vertinen play before. Hopefully I'm not butchering the last name. He came through qualies. Good player, right? I think in the low hundreds, around 122 ranking, somewhere in that neighborhood. Echeverry has been very good in the last few months. Had a good result, I believe, at the French Open. But this is a possible upset special in this little section here. I'm not 100% sure who's going to win this match. Qualifier versus the 30 seed, who's maybe not necessarily the strongest hardcourt player. I'm going to take the upset special, give it to the qualifier, right? Give it to him. See if he can take it down. The next matchup from there is going to be Stan Wawrinka versus Yoshihito Nishioka, right? In this section, interesting matchup. Nishioka is the lefty, right? Counter puncher, good backhand, good forehand, no major weapons and moves well. Stan, the man, can hit through the court basically on any surface. This court doesn't look to be playing extremely slow, so I think Stan's going to do well here regardless. I think it's a good court for him, not too slow, not too fast. I'm taking Wawrinka in this matchup. Next matchup, we've got another qualifier on dock, Nicholas Moreno de Alberon, who I believe played Division I tennis, UC Santa Barbara, maybe something like that, right, over in California, and has kind of worked his way up through the tour here in the last couple of years. He's been out there for a while now, and he's looking to make an impact. Guys that come through qualies, a lot of times people think qualies players can't win matches, but they've also played three matches to get into the draw, they're used to the court and they've been at the tournament for a considerable amount of time. And that's also super important. In this matchup, though, I think Sonigo is going to take him. Uh, Alboran's not going to be ready for the difference in level and is going to struggle against Sonigo. Hampfman, Yannick versus Yannick Sinner, right? So we've got a really interesting matchup here. Hampfman, been on the tour forever. I think he's 31 years old. The German might have played college tennis in the U.S. Sinner with the big booming game, forehand, backhand serve. Everything is essentially a weapon if you're Yannick Sinner. So sort of this quiet, humble personality off the court. But you get on the court and the guy's firing rockets at you. I think Sinner takes this pretty comfortably. But Hampfman been playing great tennis lately. And I guess in this section of the draw, I didn't really talk about upsets. Potential upset, maybe Vukic if he's hot on the forehand against Zverev. I really don't think he's going to be able to hit through him. Another potential upset if Mute is super flashy here, he possibly gets through against Andy Murray. Other than that, I don't see any other obvious upsets unless Moreno de Alboran gets hot against Lorenzo Sonigo, right? So that's also possible. All right, moving on to the next section now, Medvedev versus Balaj, right? Interesting matchup. I'm going to take Daniil here in straight sets comfortably. The next matchup after that has been the red fire hot 
Max Purcell. And in this matchup, he's playing his fellow countryman from Australia, Christopher O'Connell. I'm taking Purcell in this matchup, and I think he's going to win this probably in four sets. He's been serving out of his mind and playing very well off the ground. O'Connell's a solid player, but I just don't see him beating Purcell in this matchup. Next matchup after that, Keena Shikori versus Fernando Melagini Alves, not the Fernando Melagini we remember from the 1990s with the one-hander, uh, real thin guy that hit the hit the beautiful one-hander. Nishikori, interesting case, came back, tried to work his way through challenges a little bit, struggled a little bit at first, and now Nishikori looking pretty good after going through some more events and hitting the ball very well. The old Nishikori, remember, but also still kind of struggling with injuries. I'm taking Nishikori in this matchup in straight sets. Sebastian Baez coming off his win down in Winston-Salem, right? He's looking pretty good. He beat Yuri Hilechka in the finals there. Playing Borna Choric, really interesting matchup because they just played in Winston-Salem with Baez winning that match. Different court though, super slow surface. So I'm going to take Choric on this surface a little faster, a little easier to hit through the court, I think than what we saw in Winston-Salem. Next matchup, Nicolas Jerry versus Luca Van Asch, the young French player, another, again, French player, a lot of creativity, good player, good solid guy. He's not ready to get through the big game of Jerry yet, though. I'm taking Jerry there in straights. Albert ramos Vanolas versus Alex Mickelson, the young American who's sort of this lanky, rangy guy. Reminds me a little bit of Sam Querrey. Albert ramos Vanolas on the tail end of his career, can Mickelson get some crowd support and win this in four sets? I'm going to say he's going to do just that. Then we've got Yi Bing Wu, who's been having some physical ailments in some events, including, I believe, Wimbledon. He's been having some issues, a little bit heart rate and some things like that. Don't want to get into those issues in any capacity, but he's playing Dusan Lajevic, right, who beat Sinner, I believe, last week, first round of Cincinnati. F. Sinner came off that win off Toronto. Caught him right after the tournament, right? Transportation, fatigue, different things like that. I like Wu's game, but I'm not sure physically where he's at. So I'm going to take Lajevic in this matchup. Next matchup is going to be Timothy Skatoff, right? Versus Alex Damonau, who is very, very good this summer and has had some very good results on tour. Skatoff, I like his game. Looked good in qualities. Again, another qualities player here. Looked very strong in qualities. Dismantled, I believe, James Duckworth in the third round of qualities. Handily, didn't even look close. I'm going to take the demon in this matchup, though, for this section. Any potential upsets that I'm seeing in this section, right? We'll look at a couple different things here. Possibility of Nishikori going down because we don't know his injury situation. Baez as well. I think Baez could beat Chorich again, possibly even on this court. It's a different court, right? And then the other one I would look for is possibly skate off if he gets really hot for some reason, right, in this event coming out of qualities. You never know. Maybe he upsets the demon and gets a little bit lucky there and and then pushes him pretty hard. Let's go to the next section now, everybody. All right, this section, Karen Hatchinoff versus Michael Moe. Hatchinoff been out for what seems like quite a while. Moe been playing very well, gets the wild card here. I'm taking Hatchinoff here in four sets. I think he's going to find his way through and get it done. We've got Diaz Acosta versus John Isner in his last tournament ever, right? At least last Grand Slam, I believe he announced his retirement. Isner been one of the top Americans for what seems like forever now, coming out of the University of Georgia. Huge serve, big ground strokes, but for Big John, right, age has finally caught up to him, and his biggest issue is really movement, and that's been a big key for him. Really been struggling with movement as he's gotten older. I'm still going to take Isner's big serve here and see if he can win that match against Diaz Acosta, who's probably never played against him. We've got Radu Albot versus Jack Draper, who had been out for in, with injury. I believe missed Wimbledon due to injury. Albot never an easy out. Draper, big lefty forehand. A little too much tilt on the technique for my personal preference, but big lefty forehand. And Albot just sort of kind of good off everything, right? Forehand, backhand, not a huge serve but a good game. I'm taking Albot here to win this match. All right, Mark Andrea Hoosler versus Hubert Hercotch, right? Hercotch been playing well again. I think Hercotch's seeding a 17 is not as good as it normally would be. So I'm taking Hercotch to win this match and taking him to win it in three straight sets. His serve is still fire. The backhand's big and dangerous and very consistent. And his forehand is good enough. He's going to get through this match against Hoosler. Ugo Umber versus Matteo Berrettini. Here's your potential 
upset special or dark horse matchup for this section of the draw, right? So we've got this matchup. We're looking at it going Matteo Berrettini two years ago. Wimbledon was what, a top five seed or whatever he was at that point, top six. Huge game. Forehand is massive, still massive even at this you know date and time, still one of the biggest on tour. Serve is titanic. Um, bear, tricky lefty, plays pretty well. Silky smooth on basically all sides, a good player. But I think here, Berrettini pulls the upset special over Umber. Then we've got Diego Schwartzman, right, who's been on a decline. I believe the ranking now has slipped into the 90s or the 100s range against Arthur Rinderkonech, and hopefully I'm not butchering his name. I believe he played tennis at Texas A&M University, if I am correct. I might be wrong about that. But I'm going to take Schwartzman in this matchup just for a little baby upset special, height versus Lack of heights, and I can say that because I'm short. Next matchup, right? Taro Daniel versus Gael Monfils. Interesting matchup here. Daniel, always a tough out for anybody and has had some really nice flashes of brilliance in the last year or two. He is a qualifier coming off three wins in qualies, and Monfils been playing really, really well. And Monfils played extremely well on the slow courts up, and I believe it was Canada looked really, really good. So this is an interesting matchup. I'm going to take Monfils in this particular matchup this time. And then the last one of this little section, right, is going to be Rusevori down here versus Andre Rublev. Rusevori just beat Rublev in Cincinnati. So that's a really interesting matchup. And of the two players, I personally think Rusevori has the stronger backhand than Rublev does. And because he's a little bit stronger on the backhand, I think there's a chance he pulls the upset special. Rublev has to go nuclear on the forehand side earlier in the point than Rusevori can to try to get ahead of him and try to stay on top of him. And these courts are not as slow as what we saw in Canada and in the high bouncing courts we saw in Cincinnati. So I do think Rublev has a chance to squeak through here. I'm going to take Rusevori as a bracket buster upset and say he's still going to beat Rublev here at the U.S. Open and cause a massive upset. So there's your kind of your upset special for this section. It's going to be Andre Rublev. That's my biggest one. Michael Moe, also a potential upset special in this section over Hatchinoff because Hatchinoff's been off for a little while. And then we've got some other really interesting matchups here. Berrettini versus Ugo Ambert. Really interesting matchup. I think Berrettini takes that one. But yeah, really strong section here. And then I like Monfils versus Taro Daniel as well. Let's move to the next one now, guys. All right, so next up, another potential upset special. Casper Rude versus the young up-and-coming American Emilio Nava, who I also believe has a brother who's also a heck of a tennis player. Now, Nava, again, another qualifier coming through, winning his three rounds and looking very good doing it, also on the rise. I believe his ranking is around the 150 mark right now, so very strong player. But can he beat Casper Ruud in the first round of a major? I don't think Nava's ready quite yet. I don't want to root against Americans. But I'll say this, I think Rude's going to win this, but it's going to be a little tighter than, than you think. And I think for Nava's game, measuring his game going forward and trying to get better in the future, great measuring stick, great way to see how you stack up against somebody who's a top five player, even though on hard courts, maybe that's not a true ranking for Casper. Casper's got a chance here to go through this draw pretty quickly in his little section. So I'm going to take Rude right there. Next pick up, JJ Wolf, hungry like the wolf, right? With the 80s haircut, love that out of Ohio versus Zhizhen Zhang, right? Hopefully I'm not butchering that too much. Love Zhang's game, love the two-hander, love the forehand. You know, kind of has the old Federer haircut from back in the, what, like 2001, 2002 type days, little samurai haircut. Uh, really good player. Wolf uh, can be a little bit streaky because guy has a titanic game. He has almost, to me, kind of a Del Potro style forehand, this kind of straight arm, gigantic forehand that can happen, but... I don't know. Interesting matchup. I'm taking Wolf here on the home soil, American soil to win this one. Next matchup, Rinky Hijikata versus Pavel Kotov, right? Another interesting matchup right here. Hijikata, an up-and-coming player. Kotov also playing very well recently. This one, to me, sort of a toss-up. I'm kind of leaning Hijikata's way, but then Kotov, I'm like, ah, maybe. I'm going to take Hijikata in this matchup right here. Next one, Martin Fucevic, right? who's a really good player. He's going to step up against Sebastian Corda. Now, not giving Sebi Corda any grief whatsoever. I think he was going to say he was a Wimbledon contender not too long ago. Hey, you've got to have some confidence to do well in the pro tour. You can't sit back and constantly say, I'm not going to get things done. You want to be the guy or the person that steps up and says, hey, 
I can get this done. I can contend. I can compete with these guys. So I'm going to actually take in this matchup, I'm going to take quarter over Fucevic, but I think it's very possible Fucevic comes out, solid performance, and beats Seb Korda here, but we'll take Korda. We've got Adrian Manorino, who has had the ultimate comeback and resurgence in his career, versus Watanuki, who's not an easy out. He's a tough opponent. He's very tricky, very good player. And just very solid all around, no obvious weaknesses. Manorino, though, sort of has, you know, this backhand where he does more damage sometimes with the backhand because sometimes he gets a little more MPH or is capable of it on the backhand versus his shorter forehand side swing. In this matchup to this time, I'm taking Manorino here to get that win. Next matchup, right, is going to be Richard Gasquet versus... Fabian Morajan, who I believe had a good result. What was it? Maybe a couple months ago, might have had played Alcaraz tight or beat Alcaraz. Just trying to remember off the top of my head, but looked pretty good a few months ago on clay a little bit. Probably been sticking to the clay this spring. Gasquet, we both know though too, right? Like sometimes the slower surfaces, but I think Gasquet, what, 37 years old at this point, still playing very competitive ball. I'm going to give this one to Gasquet this time and say youth does not prevail just yet. Sebastian Offner versus Nuno Borges. Borges, I believe, played NCAA Division I ball in the United States and then hit the tour afterwards, right? has been out there forever doing a great job. Not an older player, but just spent a lot of time, you know, Futures than challengers, things like that. This is an interesting matchup. Borges can be a very strong player. I'm going to take Borges in this matchup. And then a possible upset special. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I do believe this is an upset special. We've got Lerner Tien versus Francis Tiafo. I think Tien, I could be wrong, still might be just 17 years old, up and coming American player versus Francis Tiafo, who made a huge run at last year's US Open, right? Going toe to toe with Rafa and then taking him out and advancing, what, to the semis, I think, Tiafo last year before he lost. Tien, though, really interesting, tricky player. Played a season, I believe, this last year at USC as a 17 year old. Lefty just won Kalamazoo, which is the national juniors for the United States, and did it easily in the finals, no problem. Nice backhand, Titanic left hand, forehand. Decent serve needs a little bit of work on the technique, but a very strong player. So this is an interesting matchup. I'm going to take the upset special. I can't believe I'm doing it. I'm going to take Tien. And even if he doesn't get anywhere near an upset, I think for him and the future of his career, he looks pretty promising. He's going to really be able to test himself against Tiafo and see how he stacks up right against somebody who's still top 10 in the world and dangerous on a hard court. Francis is dangerous to those explosive explosive hands. Let's move to the next section, everybody. We've got Tommy, one of my favorite players on tour. Tommy Paul, love the guy. Great guy. Awesome game. Love that his game is unique too against Stefano Travaglia, right? Really interesting matchup with the Italian. We saw the uh, resurgence of the Italians back a few years ago, right? All these Italians coming out of everywhere, doing a lot of work within their technique and their tactics and different things, and just a really strong showing by Italy as a country in the last few years. Tommy Paul, heck of a tennis player, and Tommy physically one of the biggest physical beasts, I think, on tour. Doesn't get tired, used to training down in that South Florida area. Tommy was down there when I was at USTA Player Development and just a very, very good and crafty athletic tennis player. Love Tommy's serve too. I think one of the things that's the most underrated about Tommy is his serve. He gets a big racket drop and racket stretch on his serve. And I think that is one of the biggest keys to why his game is so big. I think he can do more with his serve and his kick serve than people are ready for. And I think that's a big key for Tommy. So I think Tommy wins this one in, let's say, maybe three or four sets. Travaglia might sniff one out. Roman Safiulin, I'm probably butchering Roman's poor last name, my bad, against Cecinato, who's been around forever, the Italian, who's definitely way more comfortable on clay. This matchup, I'm going to take Safiulin, who had a nice little run a few months ago, I believe, at an event and looked pretty strong. There's nothing particularly that stands out about his game, but there's also no weaknesses, so I'm taking him in this matchup. Next matchup, right? Ilya Avashka, who looked like a pretty strong player a couple years ago against Sarundalo, one of the Sarundalo brothers, right? This is a very interesting matchup right here. Avashka has shown no flashes of what he showed a few years ago. I think maybe it was last year in Atlanta or the year before he made a little run there. Hasn't showed that in a long time, so I don't know what's going on with him. And then Sarundalo, who's always a tough out. 
So in this matchup, I'm taking Sarundalo for the upset special. All right, next matchup up, right? Marcos Giron versus Davidovich Vakina. Giron has really struggled the last couple weeks in the Master Series events for a couple reasons. No offense, Carew, but these are the reasons that I see. Giron was still trying to play blaster ball and crush everything through the court and not play the court itself. The courts in Cincinnati were really high bouncing and the courts in Canada were also really slow. Giron suffered with both, not realizing I need to play the court and not just try to blast through the court strictly. He had a tough out there in two consecutive matches. This court seems to be playing a little bit quicker and Davidovich Fakina likes a slower court. So I think this matchup is a potential upset special. If Giron's got quicker court conditions to play with, I think there's a darn good chance he beats Davidovich Fakina. So I'm going to pick Giron in that matchup right there. Next matchup, Bublik versus Dominic Team. Battle of some of the guys that you can invest in their careers through that virtual token holder currency thing. I can't remember the name right now. I apologize if I'm butchering that and just not remembering what it is, but they're both involved in that project. And uh, this is an interesting matchup for me because Bublik can be so up and down. He can be sort of this roller coaster player. And then team, right, has sort of not been able to find his footing in the last few years after making, what, a U.S. Open final a few years ago and being a really strong player. He just hasn't found it since then. Struggled with some injuries, I believe, several some other things. But Bublik is so streaky that I'm just not sure who to pick here. I'm going to actually take in the possible upset special, Dominic team to beat a streaky or potentially off Bublik. Next matchup, Pedro Kashin versus Ben Shelton, the American. Ben Shelton made a huge run in the Australian Open back in 2023. And after that, basically decided, you know, hey, I got to go pro and take this thing super seriously around that time frame. Did a great job back then. And if you make a run like that, why wouldn't you push yourself in that direction? I'm going to take Shelton here, but he hasn't really proven himself in quite a while. I'm not trying to be negative towards Ben Shelton. He's going to come around, but his game hasn't been effective in quite some time since that Aussie Open run. Next matchup, Oslin Karatsev versus Yuri Lehechka. Karatsev hits the living heck out of the ball. Both sides, really big strokes, right? Lehechka also hits the heck out of the ball, and Lehechka just made that run in Winston-Salem. I will say this, though. Lehechka, big weapons on the forehand and backhand side. Not a fan of his serve technique. It's kind of this weird ball toss. A little bit high for my liking. I'm just not a huge fan of his serve. So I'm going to take in this matchup. Lehechka coming off the Winston-Salem run, but Karatsev could certainly win that matchup. Next matchup, Carbeas Baena versus Holger Rune. Rune got bounced out by Giron a couple weeks ago in one of the events. So Holger Rune hasn't looked that strong in the last few tournaments leading up to this, but I would not count him out when it comes to three out of five sets. I think this is a comfortable matchup for him. I think he goes through this pretty comfortably and pretty easily. Let's get into those last few sections, guys. All right, in this section, right, Stefano Tsitsipas versus Ronich possible upset special right there. Dominic Stricker versus Popper, and that's an interesting match. You've got Qualifier versus a guy who's been on the up and up in the last six months or so. First one here, Ronich versus Tsitsipas. Tsitsipas not playing well recently. I've talked about the technical deficiencies in his slice backhand as well as his topspin backhand. Ronich potentially dangerous just because he has that gigantic serve and can beat you in tiebreakers every single set, right? I'm going to take Tsitsipas in this particular matchup this time. Next matchup, Stricker versus Popperin. We've got Stricker here playing very well coming through qualities. I believe Stricker now 21 years of age, continuing to play on that challenger tour, continue to get wins, continue to fight each week and get better, making a good natural progression on tour. Popperin has been very hot the last few months, picking up his game, you know, making deeper runs and his games just look better the last few months. And he plays strategically smarter than he used to, kind of got into this just boom boom, boom, bang, bang thing for a while, realized that wasn't working and started to learn how to play from different parts of the court. I'm going to take Stricker in a little upset special right here. Next one, Quinton Halis versus Benjamin Bonzi. Interesting matchup between the French players. Halis, good game. Bonzi, good game. I'm taking Halis this time. Quan versus Christopher Eubanks, who made the big run at Wimbledon 2023 but has struggled a little bit in the hard court events since then, right? Chris Eubanks, great game, interesting game. I think he has too much tilt on his forehand, which hurts him a little bit on hard courts versus what on grass he was able to get away with in terms of his serve being more effective and setting him up for really easy forehand serve plus ones. In this situation here, though, I think Eubanks wins this match against Quan. I don't think the forehand's going to be an issue this first round. Musette versus Draguette. 
Not going to lie, I haven't seen the Frenchman play. Musetti, not great on quicker surfaces. This may be a medium-style hard court. Musetti's forehand with kind of that limped wrist position can cost him in certain situations, but I will take Musetti here in straight sets. Then we got Mensic versus Grigor Barrer, right, versus the Frenchman. Mensic with a nice win in qualies over Fabio Fonini, fan favorite, right? Love Fonini's game, super smooth. Beat him there. So he's a qualifier. I'm going to take him to beat Barrer in the first round. Mirmer Kecmanovic versus Juan Pablo Varias here, right? The Canadian. Kecmanovic, solid game all around. Very good player. I'm going to take Kecmanovic here. I'm going to say four sets. Next matchup here, Steve Johnson versus Taylor Fritz. Johnson at kind of a turning point in his career, right? He's on the downside of the career. I think his ranking is around 186 in the world right now. Taylor Fritz, top 10. Been playing pretty well overall, ranking-wise, right? But didn't have great runs in the last two Master Series events. I think the super slow courts hurt him there a little bit, right? So I'm going to take Fritz in this one. We're going to say Steve Johnson might be able to get one set with that big forehand, big serve combo, and throwing in some of those slice backhands. All right, guys, last section, Felix Oje Aliasim versus Mackie McDonald. This is our last first round section. Mackie McDonald been playing very well. Oje Aliasim not been playing very well. Major issues on the backhand for those reasons. I'm calling upset special, even though maybe it's not an upset at this point. Mackie McDonald going to win this match in four or five sets, I believe. Next matchup, Hugo Delian versus Borno Gojo, right? Gojo, I think, played at Wake Forest coming through qualies here. To me, though, not the best mover. Gojo, Delian, I think, consistent player, no major weapons. But I see Delian winning this based on his movement, probably in four sets. Next matchup is Yuri Vesely versus Enzo Gukad, right? The Frenchman. Vesely, been on tour forever. Big lefty game. I believe he's a lefty. I want to make sure I've got that right. But Kukad, very silky smooth, typical French player game. A lot of variety, does things very well. Vesely, I just don't see him winning this matchup this time. I'm taking the Frenchman. We've got Zachary Zvaita versus Francisco Sarundolo, the 20 seed, right, who's more of a dirt baller in this little section here. And Zvaita, right, comes through the qualifying. So another interesting player coming through qualifying, getting their three matches in. The one thing going against Zach in this matchup, right, no major weaponry. He's a pretty small player who moves pretty well. No major weapons in his game. Sarundolo more comfortable on the dirt. I'm going to take Sarundolo here just because he's got that seating advantage and overall more experience on the big stage. Laszlo Jera versus Brandon Nakashima. This is an interesting matchup right here. Jera, good player, very solid off both sides. Nakashima can be tricky. Too much tilt on his forehand, which prevents him from attacking a little bit on that side. I'm going to take Nakashima in the hometown home cooking upset special. Then we've got Shima Bakuro versus Hugo Gaston, right? The flashy Frenchman. We get a lot of flash from France, which is always a good thing. Like the variety, right? And a little flashy flair just playing. I'm going to take in this matchup this time, Shimakuro. Sorry there. And then next one, Zapatas Morales versus Ethan Quinn, who declared pro. I believe he's being coached by the same coach as Tommy Paul, Brad Stein, who's a great guy. Um, Quinn, not quite ready for prime time, in my opinion, at this point. He's got the wild card, and he's a good player, but I don't think he's got it fully together yet to pull the upset over Zapata Morales who favors probably dirt at this point, but I think he's just a little bit too tough of an out. I'm going to take him in four sets. And then Djokovic versus Alexander Muller. We're taking Djokovic here in three pretty comfortable sets. Let's say four, three, and three. Let's move on to the next round now. Let's get this going. We are in round two, Alcarez versus Harris. I'm not going to get into deep explanations on these this time, guys. We're taking Alcarez here versus Harris. Jordan Thompson versus Dan Evans. I want Jordan Thompson here. As long as he can play the forehand over Evans, his slice backhand, and doesn't end up hitting balls up where Evans can attack with his forehand, I think Thompson wins that matchup. We got Artur Fees versus Matteo Arnoldi. I'm taking Fees again to come through in this round. Kokonakis versus Cam Nori, possible upset special, right? Let's look at this a little bit. Kokonakis, kind of hot and cold, huge tilt on the forehand, which might prevent him from beating Cam. Cam's tough because Cam just, he's a hes a human ball machine. He doesn't miss, right? So that's what's tough about Cam. I'm going to take Kokonakis. Oh, I'm not. I'm going to take Nori in this matchup. I don't know. And then we've got Zverev versus Constant Lestien from France, right? I think Zverev cruises through this pretty comfortably. He's been playing very well. Next matchup, Murray versus Dimitrov, right? Grigor, what's going to happen in this matchup? I'm going to take Andy Murray in this matchup to beat Dimitrov. 
little upset special. Then we've got the qualifier, Vertanen, and I'm probably butchering that poor guy's last name because I haven't seen him play yet, but we got him and Stan the man, right? Let's take Stan to get through to this next round. Sonigo versus Sinner, Battle of the Italians. Paisan, what can you do for me? We've got Sinner here. He's going to blast through Sonigo. It's going to be four sets, though. Sonigo's got big weapons. Too much tilt on his forehand as well. We've got a lot of guys guilty of that on the tour, but I'm taking Yannick here. Medvedev versus Max Purcell, who we know serves very well, and Purcell will serve in volley against Daniil, who will stand really far back in the court. I'm taking Daniil in this matchup. I don't think Purcell can go through Daniil here. All right, next matchup, Nishikori versus Borna Chorich. Nishikori, if he can stay healthy, is definitely capable of beating Chorich. At this point, though, I'm going to take Borna Chorich to win this match. Next matchup, Jerry versus the young American Alex Mickelson with the big game. I will say Mickelson doesn't move that well, and I think he's only 19 years old or 18 years old. Super young guy, right? Pretty much fresh out of high school at this point. I'm going to take Jerry. I think he's going to just basically out hit Mickelson and he moves a little bit better. He's got more experience out there, even if Mickelson has the home crowd to pull for him. Next matchup, Lajovic versus the Demon. I think the Demon takes this one pretty comfortably with some of the sets being a little closer than you might think. Hatchinoff versus Big John Isner. Lucky for Hatchinoff, that Isner, right? Tail end of the career, last tournament ever here, I believe. I'm taking Karen in this one right here. Albot versus Herkoch. Pretty easy for me to take Herkoch here. With that big serving, getting lots of free points. Next matchup, Berrettini versus Schwartzman. Berrettini definitely going to pile drive through Schwartzman on this one. Diego on kind of the tail end, I believe, of his career, right? No major weaponry consistency on tour. Doesn't seem to get it done on faster surfaces for the most part. Monfils versus Rusevori. Chance for Gael to make another big run at a slam. Rusevori, very consistent and solid player. But I'm taking Monfils right here for sets. Rude versus J.J. Wolf. This is a possible upset special. If Hungry Like the Wolf brings his A game and doesn't have any lapses, I'm taking J.J. here to win this and beat Casper in round two. Next matchup, Hijikata versus Sebastian Korda. Korda not been playing well as of late. To me, doesn't move as well as he needs to move to play at this level and get up higher in the rankings. I think Court has got to put more emphasis on moving quicker around the court and not being sort of fetter or smooth because he doesn't move as well as Roger did. But I'm going to take Corda in this matchup. Manorino versus Gasquet in the next one here. Manorino, he slides through and beats Gasquet in four sets. Borges versus Lerner Tien. Tien causes the upset over Tiafo in round one with my super upset right there. I'm going to take... Borges to win that matchup. I think Tian gets the hot flash matchup in round one over Tiafa, wins that, and then it ends for him there. Tommy Paul versus Safalin. I'm taking Tommy Paul here in four sets. Sarundalo versus Marcos Giron. I think Giron in this tournament has a chance to make a nice little run. I'm taking Giron over the dirt baller. Sarundalo, Dominic Team versus Ben Shelton. I think Shelton beats Team via serving volley. Big lefty forehand to the backhand side. I think Shelton takes that. Lehechka versus Holger Runa. I think Runa cruises here in four sets over Lehechka or straight sets. Sitsipas versus Stricker. I'm taking Stefanos in this matchup. Halise versus Christopher Eubanks. I'm going to take Halise in the upset over Chris Eubanks. Chris building up those big grass court points, but can't back it up here. Then we've got Musetti versus Mensik. I'm taking Mensik, the young guy coming through qualies. Next one, Kecmanovic versus Fritz. We've got Taylor Fritz here, pretty comfy. McDonough versus Hugo Delian. I'm taking Mackie as long as nothing happens physically to him out there. Doesn't have any problems with injuries or anything like that. Kukad versus Sarundalo. Taking Sarundalo. Next one, Nakashima taking Brandon. And then we got Zapatas Morales versus Djokovic. That's an easy cruise for Djokovic, 2-2-3. Two, two, Let's move to the next round, guys. We are now in round three, Carlos Alcarez versus Jordan Thompson. This is an interesting test for Alcarez because of Thompson's forehand. Thompson played Djokovic pretty tight at Wimbledon, but I'm going to say Alcarez here over Thompson in what's not an easy match. He goes four sets with Thompson. Fees versus Nori. I'm taking Fees in the upset special. Cam 
might be lucky to even get to this round in the tournament. Then we've got Zverev versus Murray. Really interesting matchup. Andy with a chance to bust through to round four. I'm going to take Zverev here, though, in round three to beat Murray in a tight one. Then we've got Warinka versus Yannick Sinner. Sinner crushes Stan the man. Stan cannot handle his power. He moves through. Next one, Medvedev versus Chorich. Easy here for Daniil. Scraps through Borna pretty comfortably. Next one, Jerry versus Dimenauer. I think Jerry can make a run with that big forehand, big serve, big backhand combo. Being a tall player, Demon goes home. Then we've got Hatchinov versus Herkoch. We're going to take Herkoch to make a nice run here at the open and beat a rusty Hatchinov. Then we've got Berrettini versus Monfils. I'm going Berrettini. He overpowers Gael on a court that's not super slow. Next matchup, Wolf versus Korda. I'm going to take Hungry Like the Wolf over Korda in this matchup. Next one, Manorino versus Borges. I think Manorino goes to round four here. Then we've got Tommy Paul versus Marcos Giron. Again, these guys played, what, three, four weeks ago, whatever it was, a couple weeks ago, back on hard. Paul won, I believe, in three tight sets. Giron commented how hard it was to get a ball past Tommy. I'm going to take Tommy right here to win this matchup. Then we got Shelton versus Runa. I think Runa cruises over Ben in this matchup if Ben gets to this round. Then we've got Sitsipas and Halis. I'm taking Sitsipas in this matchup. Then we've got Mensik versus Fritz. I think this is where the Cinderella story for Mensik runs out and Fritz beats him in straight sets. Mackie McDonald versus Sarundolo. I think McDonald has the ability to beat Sarundolo, and I think he's going to cause an upset special if he gets to this round. And then finally, Nakashima versus Djokovic. Again, pretty comfy for Novak here. We're going to say Novak takes this one in three sets. Two of those three sets go 6-4 or even 7-5. Next round here coming up. We are in the fourth round, everybody. Now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty, right? Alcaraz versus Fees. I think this is where the Cinderella story for Fees ends. Alcaraz takes him out in three or four relatively tight sets right there. Next up, Zverev versus Sinner. Sinner's game's huge. Zverev is on his way back up, and he was a tough out in the past, being kind of this brick wall guy with a big serve who didn't miss balls. This is a really interesting matchup. Sinner can have problems with people like this. For that reason, I'm taking Alexander Zverev to upset Yannick Sinner. Next matchup, Medvedev versus Jerry. I think this is where Daniil ends it for Jerry, right? Can get back all those big pay shots and defend really well. Herkoc versus Berrettini in the next matchup. I think Herkoc comfortably takes this one against Mateo. Let's say four relatively tight sets where Berrettini just can't get into Herkoc's service games that well. Now we've got Wolf versus Manorino. This is interesting. I'm going to go Manorino to win this matchup right here. For some reason, he's on a run. He's playing resurgent tennis. The guy's looking the best he's ever looked at the age of 35 versus even when he was 25. Tommy Paul versus Holger Runa. I think Runa takes this one. He's able to exploit some of the technical deficiencies in Tommy Paul's game. Then we got Sitsipas and Fritz. And again, Sitsipas not been looking that strong this year. I'm taking Taylor Fritz to beat Stefanos here. And we got Mackie versus Djokovic. And the problem Mackie's going to have if he gets to this round against Novak is Novak just moves better than he does. The ball striking, I don't think Mackie's that far behind. His ball striking is pretty darn good. I think what's going to cost him or hurt him a little bit here is the movement. And Djokovic plays with a little bit more of a heavier ball than Mackie does as far as spin and rotation. Mackie plays relatively flat. And I think Djokovic is going to use those angles and different things with spin and depth to beat McDonald. Next round, guys, we're into the quarters. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty, right? Alcaraz versus Zverev, Medvedev versus Herkoc, Manorino versus Runa. I can't believe we've got Manorino in the quarters. No offense, Adrian, but that's a pretty good run, man. And then we've got Fritz versus Djokovic. This is pretty interesting stuff. I didn't see my draw playing out like this. It was more of a, you know, kind of working my way through right now live with you guys. But Alcaraz, Zverev, oh, can Zverev pull the upset special? It's interesting. I think Zverev is going to get damaged by Alcaraz because Alcaraz will use a lot of drop shots and feel. And Zverev doesn't move that well front to back because he's six foot six. He moves pretty well side to side. The front to back is lacking. I think Alcaraz is going to exploit a lot of that with touch and exploit the front part of the court as well as get Zverev backed up and do damage 
with big ground strokes. I'm taking Alcaraz here, but that's a pretty competitive matchup. Alcaraz will abuse the drop shot. Medvedev versus Hercotch here in the next quarterfinal. Hercotch making quite the run. I think he's a tough matchup for Daniil. They play a very similar style in certain ways. As far as being big guys that serve pretty well and then move pretty well, I'm going to take Daniil in this matchup this time, though. Next matchup, Manorino versus Holger Runa. This is a super interesting matchup, right? Runa's been struggling again in the last couple Master Series events, but those courts were ultra slow and high bouncing, and I think his game, playing sort of this hyper-aggressive style that everybody plays, Kind of couldn't find himself out there and lost some easier matches. He's going to beat Manorino very comfortably in this match without any issue whatsoever. And then next one, Taylor Fritz versus Novak Djokovic. I think Djokovic takes this in a relatively comfortable three sets. He beat up on Fritz a couple weeks ago in straight sets. I think the first set was a bagel. Granted, a slower court surface, but really took it to Fritz. I think Fritz was quite surprised by that match and kind of didn't know, you know, like what the heck just happened out here? This guy just beat the heck out of me. So Fritz, great player, but Djokovic takes that one. Let's go to the semis now, right? Alcarez versus Medvedev. Alcarez owned him, right? Essentially the last matchup in time they played by abusing the front port of the court with serve and volley, right? From Medvedev's very deep return positions. And then also a lot of drop shots and different things to exploit the front part of the court. Runa versus Djokovic, also an interesting matchup because Runa head-to-head -head versus Djokovic, very strong. Runa plays the style that Djokovic doesn't like. Runa can defend very well and sit in the back of the court and just sit back there and play defense and be a brick wall, or Runa can attack as soon as you give him something short. Djokovic doesn't play well against that combination. Djokovic tends to play well against hyper-aggressive players, not players that can defend extremely well like he can, but then also attack you. So let's just look at these here real quick. I'm going to take Alcaraz to exploit the front part of the court, throw in some serve and volley versus Daniil, and then mix in drop shots again to exploit the front part of the court. I think he's going to force Daniil off that kind of zone five, really deep position behind the baseline. He's going to force Daniil to move up. And when Daniil gets into those positions, he's not going to like it. He's not going to be comfortable. And he's going to get time taken away from him because Alcaraz is able to exploit the front part of the court, and not a lot of people do that effectively. So he's going to put Daniil into a position where he has to play forward and he doesn't want to. He's going to beat Daniil in four sets or even three sets. I don't think it's going to be that competitive or close. It's just a very good matchup for Alcaraz. Then we've got Runa versus Djokovic, and I talked about how Runa can play brick wall, and Djokovic doesn't like brick wall defense. He'd rather play somebody who's going for lasers and he can count on a lot of free errors, and then he can take his chances and shots when his chances and shots come to him. Runa can play both ways. And for that reason, I think in this event, I could be very wrong. I think just because of the matchup, tennis is a lot about matchups. Runa's going to pull the upset here and beat Novak in this round because of the way that they match up. Runa's going to play dirt baller back in the back of the court and then take his shots when he gets short balls. Next round is the finals, Alcaraz versus Runa, right? I think it's an interesting matchup. They can both play in similar ways, but I think Carlos knows Holger's game, feels it out very well, and matches up very well against Holger, so much so in a way where I'm taking Alcaraz to win this U.S. Open final versus Runa. I think he's going to get the job done. I think just the way he matches up against him, it's a little more favorable. Runa moves well, but I think Alcaraz moves a little bit better. And because he moves a little bit better, he's a little bit easier to get into the defensive positions and get out of them and counter. He's also better at getting into the attacking positions a little bit more quickly because he's just a little bit faster. Runa moves really well, but I'm taking Alcaraz in this matchup in four sets to win the U.S. Open. We are submitting that bracket right there. And those are our picks for the 2023 U.S. Open, guys. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Thank you for watching my 2023 U.S. Open men's bracket picks. If you agree or don't disagree, leave your comments in the comments section below if you made it through this entire video. But I'm hoping you enjoyed this. I'll be coming back through the rest of the tournament as well and giving you some update videos. And then we'll also wrap this whole thing up at the end of the event. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. If you want to see more videos like this, like, subscribe, comment, do all those things and don't forget to share this video. I'll see you next time.